Let's go e4. Okay. So we're sticking to our guns. We're sticking to our guns. And, and the great thing about the Fortnite Scotch is that you do not need a separate system against the Petrog. You can just go knight c3. And black is, of course, the very likely to go knight c6. And now we go into the Fortnite Scotch. Against which, so far, nobody has really even played the main line, which is bishop b4. And still, still we see knight takes d4, which is a mistake. And a lot of people still attracted to this idea of chasing white's queen, which we've discussed several times. Uh, and already black has to be very careful. d6 is almost the only move here. Otherwise, we shove our pawn down black's throat. No, this is already almost losing. So as, I, as I've indicated, now we go e5. I won't re-explain this. We've had probably already three or four games that go just like this. Queen e7. Okay. This is getting worse and worse for black. Couldn't get the Stafford. Yeah, and it's an anti-Stafford idea. Okay, so what to do here? Now, I'm quite confident that some of you guys are probably... Yeah, Bishop g5 is a great move. So how do I explain this? Bishop g5 doesn't actually threaten to take the knight immediately, but Bishop g5 is a second-order threat. If we play Bishop g5... What we're actually threatening is to castle queenside, and then we'll be winning the knight. So bishop g5 is a great move. Um, but we can also play this very simple. We can play bishop out to e2 and cancel this pin and then force the knight back to g8, which looks absolutely atrocious for black. And we can play bishop e3 with the same exact idea. I also like bishop e3 from the perspective of preparing queenside castles. So both bishop g5 and bishop e2 are phenomenal moves. I feel like a quicker win could be yielded by bishop g5. I, I, I want to go bishop g5. I feel like we're going we're gonna to go straight for black's throat here. I like bishop g5 too. Because this creates a, a monumental challenge for black in the sense that we're threatening to castle and then the knight is going to be lost. And the thing to understand is that if black plays, well, if black plays h6 here, and we'll cross that bridge if we get there, if black plays h6, we have a move that essentially wins on the spot. We, we've got maybe even several moves that win on the spot. Queen e6. Our opponent is totally off, off, off their rocker. What to do now? Well, we already know what to do now. So, so <laughs> Bishop c4, there, there's a funny move, queen g4. And even then, we could trade queens and go like knight d5, and then black can't defend c7. It's a disaster. But we don't even need to play. Okay, so bishop c4, queen g4. Let me think for a second. That position, I'm going to try to find a knockout. There, there, there. It, it's not quite as convincing as I'd like it to be. Yeah, I think the simplest the simplest thing we can do here is just to castle, just to complete our development and, and to reinforce the threat of E takes F6. Easy does it in such positions. You really don't need any kind of extravagant idea. You don't need any extravagant ideas. Now, here we have a very high-level move. I'm going to warn everybody, this is not a move that I would expect necessarily a, you know... A, and this, I don't mean this kind of settingly, you know, like this is a pretty master level idea. So in my, probably most of you are thinking about queen f4. The way that mo most people would approach this position is to say, okay, our queen is hanging. We need to move the queen to a square such that it protects the e5 pawn. Okay, queen e4 blunders the queen. So the only square available is queen f4. Now, does queen f4 have any issues? The only issue with queen f4, actually, there are no issues with queen f4. And queen f4 is completely winning. But I want to show you guys a, an idea that I think is cooler and more instructive. And that is queen h4, which deliberately gives up the e5 pawn. And it looks like black takes on e5. And then black is ready to castle kingside. And unfortunately, after queen takes e5, we are unable to play rook e1 because our bishop isn't developed yet. So the e1 square isn't protected. But after queen takes e5, we have a very, very nice follow-up that, if I've calculated it correctly, wins the game on the spot. Knight g Okay, unfortunately, our opponent doesn't even let us demonstrate it. That's sad. But it is what it is. Knight g4. 
Okay, now we um we collect. Now we collect and we need to target the c7 pawn. How do we do that? We go knight d5. And if black castles king side, and this is, I will admit, probably not ideal on my on my end. The way I play this is maybe not perfect, but it's for those people on YouTube, it's it's three in the morning, so I'll give myself a pass. And then of course we can play knight takes c7 if we want. Yeah, our opponent is playing, if I may be honest, our opponent is playing so badly that like we have so many options on every move, and even I'm getting overwhelmed by the amount, sheer amount of different winning possibilities we have. It's just yeah, I mean, I mean, this is I guess an effective way of playing for, for black. Well, I'm saying it, I'm telling you like it is. Our opponent is just not playing very well. I'm sure they're trying. Bishop F2. I didn't say that he's not trying, but... Okay, now this... No comments. No comments. Um... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Not, not his or her best day. So... Again, you can see that even at this level, almost everybody goes for this position, knight takes d4, which is a mistake, and then follows up with another mistake, allowing e5. I've went through this many times. You guys can consult previous speedrun games to, for an explanation of why this is already bad for black. But the bottom line here is that... Um, yeah, I think maybe bishop e2 would be a, a more prudent option, forcing the knight back to g8, and then we can go knight d5, etc., this is just horrible. But we decided on bishop g5 and then castles. Bishop c5, queen h4. Now, the only idea, and maybe I overplayed this a little bit, after queen takes c5, we have a pretty subtle move that I believe wins the game immediately. So, obviously, we, we want to put a rook on e1, right? And in order to do, well, what do we need to do that? Well, we need to develop the bishop. Now, the question is, where do we develop it? And in order to figure that out, you need to understand the black wants to castle. And you need to develop your bishop, bishop such that you prevent black from being able to castle, i.e. bishop d3 is the move. Bishop d3 with the idea of meeting castles with bishop takes f6 and queen takes h7 checkmate. Um, and the, the cooler thing is that black has a tactic here. Notice that the bishop on g5, it's a type 2 undefended piece. And it's being aimed at by white black screen. What's defending it? Well, it's white screen. And you know that the queen is an incredible, incredible liability as a defender. So black has the tactic, bishop takes f2. And this looks like trouble, because if you take on f2, then black takes on g5, and then black is able to castle, and all of a sudden black is up two pawns. But it is in this position that we have a really sexy move. White to play and win. You got it, Rook H E1 anyway. Rook H E1 anyway. And maybe I think Bishop F oh Bishop F6 loses a queen. Bishop F6, Queen E3 check. And then Bishop takes H4. So that's a trap. The move is Rook H E1. You're like, I don't get it. Bishop takes H4. What am I talking about? Well, here we take the queen with check. And then we recapture Black's Bishop and we're up a piece. And overwhelmingly winning because Black's not developed. And if Black takes on e1 then we play rook takes e1 because the link between the queen and the rook we win black's queen just a cool idea rook h1 anyway this is not very common and then we hit the queen and we win the game if anybody didn't follow this line please let me know i, I want to explain it in a way such that everybody can follow it but the move is rook h1 and the, what makes this possible is the fact that the f2 pawn has disappeared when the f2 pawn is on the board rook h1 there's no contact between the queen and a piece that's on e1, which is, I think, one of the things that makes chess beautiful. It's like, our opponent is almost doing us a service by taking on f2. Queen e1 by black that we take with check. This is check. I, I know what you're thinking, but this is a check. Why not rook d1? No, rook d1 is the same thing. It doesn't matter. It does not matter in this game. I mean, it's just a little more elegant to play rook h1 somehow. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's just a little bit more culture. In, in Russian, you can say it's a little more cultured to play Rook HE1. 
Maybe f4 instead of bishop d3. f4 is also possible. I'm sure white is winning this way and that way. Black is so undeveloped here that there is no way that he should be able to survive uh, the onslaught in either case. Aesthetic is better, yeah. The aesthetic is better, and it's just be best practice to go rook h1 because rook d1 allows queen takes e1 with check. Okay, and once we go knight t5... To be honest with you, I, I was a little bit concerned about our opponent castling here. And my idea was to drop the knight back to f4 in order to try to sever the contact between black's queen and the knight on g4. Queen f5, there's bishop d3 with all sorts of skewers and nightmares. Otherwise, we capture the knight and we emerge up a piece. We also can take on c7 now that I think about it. So, thank you, Jack. <laughs> Not falling for that one. Yeah, no, knight c7 is possible. It's just that there's queen takes e5 here. And this gets a little bit messy. Knight takes f2. Remember, the black also can... Two, two can tango. It takes two to tango. So in this position, we can actually play queen takes g4 and then try to go bishop f6. But this still needs to be calculated. So I think knight f4 is the, is the simpler move. Anyways, I mean, this is all very one-sided. Because black is so undeveloped, everything in it ends up, tends to work here. Okay. I think we're going to call it a night, guys. These were two pretty solid games. We're almost 1,700. And I want to remind people watching on YouTube that I've... You can tell that I'm playing a little faster in the opening, and I'm explaining less of the basics in the opening. Um, and that is what, you know... What happens in the speedrun as we go, as we rise, my commentary level reflects the level that I'm currently at. No, I did finish the game. I mean, once Black blundered the fork, it's it's game over. We just win the queen with check. All right, guys. The next speedrun is up on YouTube, so please feel free to check it out. Would love if you subscribe to my YouTube. We're closing in on 250k subs. We're like 2,000 away. It's a huge milestone for me, so... Every sub counts. I would really appreciate it. Um, it's not a million, but it's, you know, it's a quarter of the way there. All right. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate the support. Later, everybody. Hans and Neiman. All right. Bye. Thanks for hanging out.